Hi, I'm Heinbach and it's good to have you back. At the premiere of a movie I just scored, something funny happened. The viewing was over, I had dithered out with the rest of the crowd to grab a beer and I overheard someone saying, yeah, I like the soundtrack. And that's one of the best things you can ever get after something like this. The overheard compliment where you're sure someone is it's not just being nice. <laughs> and we got into chatting and then he said, yeah, nice soundtrack, man. I recognize the synthesizers. Excitedly, I said, really? <laughs> but were they? And he paused. I could see him remembering while I was hanging on to <laughs> what he would say next. He looked at me and then said, Omnisphere. That hurt <laughs> a bit. I answered, no, no Omnisphere was used here. He said, but that's what everyone uses. And I said, yeah, that's why I am not using it. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the instruments I used in scoring shock and why. Let me get one thing out of the way first. I've got nothing against Omnisphere. Everything Eric Persing does is sound design gold and I know many people that use it. It's just that I'm not curious about it. Every time I hear somebody say, oh, this is an industry standard, oh, this is what everybody uses, it just doesn't spark me. The way my creativity lights up is through exploration, finding out new things or rediscovering old things and trying to tread ground that's new, at least for me. It is a bit like in that William Blake poem. Improvement makes straight roads, but the crooked roads without improvement are roads of genius. Genius does not mean a very, very smart person, as we do now. It means the Schöpfergeist, the spirit of creation that is inherent to artists and creating art. And that spirit comes out in me when I walk on uncertain paths. Now, for the longest time I've been told that this approach is very impractical for film work. And if I was doing like 50, 100 shows of a series a year or had to score like three or four movies a year, that would probably be true. But in this film, I was very, very lucky because the directors, Daniel Rakete Siegel and Dennis Moschito were fans. They asked me for my sound. On the first Zoom we had, they were looking at me, but they're also synthesizer nerds. So they kept looking at the background. That was a fun moment for me and I realized, okay, with these guys, we can create something fun together. Over the course of all our collaboration, especially once they were in the studio with me here and later in the bars around here, we grew together. Our ideas meshed and my sound became our sound for our film. The first musical sound you hear in the movie is the sound of the wall of test equipment, especially the Tektronix TM160 oscillators combined with Rode and Schwarz UBM4 bass and Locken amplifiers. This is a very inhumane sound. It's not things that you can hear from inside yourself, like the outside coming in and that's why I like to employ them because the plot starts there. The protagonist Bruno is a doctor who lost his approbation and now works illegally as an underground doctor helping those who can't go to a doctor themselves. Okay. 
get more of a human emotion, I often pair the test equipment with piano, like in this piece, which originally appeared on Schwebungssommer, an album I released two years back. And I reworked it completely for the soundtrack. There were soprano saxophones in there, which sounded beautiful, but were just too much on the soundtrack. It had to be more stark in contrast. Over the course of the movie, we see Bruno engage in a circle of violence that takes him ever further away from becoming a doctor again. And he gets broken in the process. To emphasize this, I wanted to employ texture. While the test equipment sounds are very pure and raw, I wanted something to contrast that as the movie progressed. For that, I used the Soviet Times Hungarian Tape Echo, the Bayak AKX 200. I had this modded for sound on sound and anything I put on there becomes wonderfully broken. I recorded an already broken sounding synthesizer, the Formanta Maestro, onto it made a bunch of loops and cut them up and used it as a basis for this piece. Bruno has just gotten horribly mutilated after a deal with the drug dealer fell through. The little arpeggio up top is from the Oberheimix Panda, and I bought this for this movie as something that would add brightness to the rather brooding and dark soundtrack. After a bunch of days working on the soundtrack with Dennis and Rakete here in my studio, we realized there's a curve to the whole movie. I'd given them 24 tracks of mine that they could use in the first edits of it, but additionally, they had also taken tracks from the YouTube audio library I made. I recorded a full giallo style horror soundtrack and you can watch that video here. They put them on in the movie the further we got along. I replaced those pieces with music in a similar giallo vibe and then I realized there needs to be something big in that style at the end. In their layout, we will be getting back to the test equipment music we had in the beginning, but it didn't make sense to me anymore. And I recorded a piece that draws influences from Morricone, Bach, Goblin. I'm not showing the whole scene, but the beautiful thing about it is that the violence here is filmed in a very unheroic way. It's almost documentary, fantastic camera work. The music can thus be huge. The main instrument here is a Swedish 1950s vacuum tube 
organ that allows for a piano-like attack. I bought this from Czech and the technician there had fixed it up using Soviet missile guidance systems vacuum tubes because they were cheaper. This is a wonderful swords to plowshares moment. And I don't know if it's because of those tubes, but it worked for all but 10 minutes before it developed a massive distortion. That sounds so great, I'm not even, I'm really hesitant to fix this instrument up or if I fix it up, I need to have that mod installed to sound like that because if I press more than one note here, it goes into full overdrive. And that was so useful in that soundtrack as I played constantly with the feeling this can just blow up and that adds to the tension. I hope you get a better feel on why I use all these strange instruments. For me, they are part of a sonic world that I use to draw from, that I can just use in scoring because that's my main job. <laughs> Before I did a lot of this, I scored theater plays and this studio is meant to score for media. And I love doing that by having all these physical things and working with them, with the directors in the space together. The movie is out only in cinemas across Germany from the 15th of February onwards. And if it gets a streaming release or something like that, I'll be putting up a community notice. I'm also working on a proper soundtrack release, but you can hear the exit music right now wherever you listen to music. That's it for this video. If you have any more questions, do put them in the comments below or visit the subreddit. I'll be seeing you in the next one. Bye.